I'm in Peterborough Prison. I'm on a 12-day license recall. It was to prevent me stop, stop talking at Oxford University. So I was due to talk at Oxford University. Please come and grab me. Stuck me in jail on recall to miss the date. So I was, I was on recall. And when I landed at Peterborough Prison, I said to them, I said, you know who I am? I'm here. I'm, I'm out in 12 days. You know what's going to happen out there, yeah? I'm happy. Just lock my door. Let me out in a week. Let me out, yeah? And they said, oh, do you want to go on protection? I said, no, I don't want to go on protection. I'm not going on protection, yeah? Okay, you're going on B-Wing. So I said, all right, I'll go and be with And my, my instinct, I, I know I've, I've done what I've had to do in previous pr prison centers. We're going to Bedford to survive, yeah? So I'm sitting there, I'll go on to, I'll go on to B Wing, and my instinct would be protect yourself, protect yourself straight away, yeah? Anyone comes near you, protect yourself. And I remember walking, I was going upstairs, and I remember looking, there was a few, few Muslims on the wing. There was four Muslims from Bedford. They got 20 years, they cut someone's ears and nose off, like a famous thing near where I live. And my head was telling me, boot him. My head, that's what my head was telling me, yeah? Head, and I was thinking, I'm out in 12 days, yeah? I just need to get through these 12 days. I don't need it any longer. So I didn't do anything. I just thought, get through the 12 days. And every time my cell door opened, I'd come out of my cell and I'd stand my back to the wall downstairs. So I'm thinking, I have to be ready. Someone's going to come for me at some point. I've got to be ready. And I can't get caught lacking in my cell because that's where they'll get you and, you and you'll be gone. So then I come out, so my cell comes out and no, no one has my back in there yeah, because there's too many Muslims. So I come out and on 20,000 police custody, I'm standing there and some white boy comes up to me and he says, Tommy, you're going to get done with boiling water. Yeah. I said, who's going to do me with boiling water? And he says, um, and he, he says, whatever cell number. He says, look over. And I looked over and there's a Somalian kid and there's the boy from Bedford. Yeah. And they're talking at the door of another cell. And he goes, mate, the amount of money they've put up for, for you to get done, it might not even be a Muslim that does you. I said, all right. And he, uh, and he goes, but the Somalian kid's going to do you with a boiling water. So I said, all right, sound. So I walk straight over and fill the Somalian kid in before he has a chance to even look. I, I said, which one? And he says, him at the door. So I said, okay. So I go over and I fill him in and then, um, and then all the screws break it up and then I go before the governor and I say, mate, he's going to do me boiling water. I'm not waiting to get boiled. They put him in jail, you know, they get boiling water, you put sugar, sugar in it, sticks to your face, you're gone. Your face is gone. I'm not waiting for that. Yeah. So I go over, I fill him in. And when I fill him in, you can see me on, you can see me on the footage and I've got my arms open and the, the imam's there. Yeah. I've got my arms open. And what I was saying, I said, is, any, is there anyone else who, 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 who wants to do it? So, but then I get nicked. Then I get nicked in the jail. Go before the governor and I say, mate, I told you lot. When I landed in this jail, I told you my life's in danger. You decided to stick me on a wing full of Muslims who were up for 25 years and that. Yeah? You decided that. They wanted to do me a boiling water. I protected myself. So nothing happened in jail. I, go, I come out of jail. I go on holiday with my kids for two weeks. I land at Luton Airport. I'm nicked for a racially aggravated attack in jail. And then they, I stand Crown Court trial. They, they, but they were forced... This was the first time I ever had good legal representation. So they, I got not guilty. They were forced, but they, they, the actual, my, my defense forced the prosecution to basically pull their case because when they went through all the stuff, it showed from the records from when I got to the jail what I'd said, but they didn't release it to my prosecution or something. So they were hiding the fact that the prison knew I was in danger. They knew I shouldn't be where I was. They put me there. Yeah. But anyway, so that was, that was bed, that was Peterborough. Um, where else have I been? Bedford. I mean, like the when I went, I, went, I got to Bedford Prison. But you know, rival gangs. Yeah. When they've got a rival gang from a different postcode, you're not allowed to be on the same wing in jail. Yeah. You got Tommy Robinson, right? Who's the rival gang? <laughs> it's Islam. It's, it's, it's all followers of Muslim uh, of Islam. So I land up at Bedford Prison. It's my local jail. I forget what I was doing on this case. I've done. I've been in ten prisons. And when I all oh, because of this politics. And, and and when I landed there, I looked at the receptionist. Said, "You got a brother called Mark." And he said, yeah, I knew, I knew his brother. I knew straight away from the face because my local jail. I said, I know your brother. He goes, yeah, I know. I said, mate, um, find out. And then we were going through where the most Muslims are. Most Muslims are on A-wing. It's the biggest wing in Bedford. And you usually go straight on induction wing when you go to that prison. And I was asking, mate, I said, is Jason in here? Is, is Johnny in here? I was asking mates I've grown up with, finding out where I've got friends to try and get with some of them. So we established some of my friends were on B-wing. There was a few Muslims. There was a famous, another case where the Somalians, there was a big case where they got shot dead in Milton Keynes, all Somalian gangs. And they were all in on A-wing. So he comes back and then he, he goes, I'm gonna, I've got to go up and see the governor. So he comes up, he comes downstairs. He goes, sorry, Tommy, man. I said, what? He said, you're going on A-wing or you can go on the numbers. Protection. I said, I'm not going on the numbers, bruv. I said, I ain't got, I have done nothing wrong to go and be housed with paedophiles. It's not happening. He goes, yeah, you're going on A-wing then. 
And I, he go, so I think they were thinking I'd, I'd choose the numbers. So, so I said, give me a pen and paper. So he gives me a pen and paper. So I write six pages detailing the threats I've had from terrorist groups, from Osman warnings, the gangs that are in there locally to me. I know the names of the gangs, the, the Pakistani gangs. I list it all. I say, your job is to keep me safe as a governor of this jail, yeah? You have a, you have a duty to keep me safe. You know these people will want to cause me harm. So I, I, I think he's going to read that. Now that's on file, yeah? He's never going to make me go on A-Wing. So I'm sitting there. He comes back down. He goes, you're going on A-Wing. I said, all right, that's the sound. And as we're walking on to A-Wing, I said, are you ready, boys? Uh, to the two screws. And he goes, what? I goes, watch what I fucking do when I get on here, man. And then we're walking on. And as I walked on, I mean, you know, like you're walking on, you've got all the landings. And they're all howling, cheering, yeah? As I'm walking in. And I'm walking in. And I'll be honest, I'm shitting myself, yeah? I'm thinking, fuck, man. Like, I, didn't, I didn't think they'd be able to do this, yeah? In my local jail, just bring me to them. So they bring me up. It's 10 to 12. They put me in my cell. Lunch is at 12 o'clock. So the workers are obviously out. The, the, pris the, the, the prisoners who have got jobs are obviously all out. The word's gone round. I go straight to my cell window and I said, your fucking paedophile would be on the D-wing. The D-wing is the paedophile ring, yeah? So I said, yeah. and I start, I start giving it through the windows because I know I, it's a, it's, I'm doing a, protect, a protection mechanism here because I can't wait for them to get me in my cell. So I go up and I'm arguing with everyone and they say, you're dead. I said, I've heard that for six years. I've had two black eyes, you shit houses, yeah? I said, like, I said, everyone agrees with me because everyone, I said, everyone, you're bullies. Everyone agrees with me. I said, all the white and black boys will come to my cell and they give me thumbs up because this happens in every jail, yeah? They'll all secretly give me the thumbs up because you lot of fucking bullies. The way you act in these jails and I'm having all this through the windows <laughs> and they were like, you're dead, you're dead. And I remember hearing some black was laughing saying, who the fuck is this geezer? And I was like, and, then, and I was like, I'm on the wing, you mugs, yeah, I'm on a, and then I'm, and then I know when that door opens, I'm getting out of that wing. I'm getting out of that cell. So the door opens for, for lunch. I go flying out of the cell. I go straight down into canteen. I walk in, I say, who's fucking Muslim? Yeah, and Dion, Dion, a uh, little gangbanger from Luton, who I got a lot of respect for. His brother, I knew his sister. I actually like him. He's converted to Islam, so he's like, yeah, actually, I'm Muslim, bruv. I'm like, oh man, and I'm I'm needing to kick this off because I'm otherwise I'm getting it. Yeah, so I'm the, so I'm like Dion, and then a white boy next to him goes, yeah, I'm fucking Muslim, and I don't know the white boy, so boom, <laughs> I'm grabbed him, I'm fighting with him. All the screws have come, broke it up. I'm in such an adrenaline rush. But then, and then I, as they pulled me out, I see another black boy, Wesley Barker. He's got a big beard. I said, you, bruv, because, and I know it. He goes, actually, man, I'm not, because I'm thinking everyone's Muslim now and everyone here's, everyone's on me. And then, as I, and then they dragged me up to the cell and I'm drenched. In the, it's the biggest adrenaline rush. That moment was, the, and, and, and they put me in my cell and they locked the door. And I remember just screaming, because ah, I, thought, I thought I was dead. I thought I was dead. And then I was screaming. But in that moment, in that time, that's a fight for my life because if that doesn't happen, when that happens, I'm down. So then I get nicked and you get a punishment. You're in isolation. So yeah, I've done that to get isolated. Yeah, I had to. I'm not asking for protection, but when you do that, you get put on 23 and a half, 23 and a half hour bang up in the, in the basement of the jail. So I'm then taken down to the basement of the jail. But before that, I'm shouting out the windows like, because like, I, was, I was like, I thought I was dead, lads. And I get locked. Then I'm down in the basement of the jail and then they bring McDonald. The boy's name was McDonald. I didn't know who he was. When I hit him, he had a big beard. And as he comes through, I'm, he's in the cell next to me. And then they brought my other mate, who I know from outside. He's in the cell next to me because he smashed up his cell before court or something. So we're all talking in the cells. And then his, this Muslim lad's trying to quash it. Going, you actually, man, like, fucking what the fuck? And I'm like, why are you trying to quash it? And then and as they brought him out, I looked through, I said, McDonald. Like, I knew him and his brother. I said, you motherfucker, man. He goes, and he goes, you actually, you're, and I said, you're converted. And, he, and he, he's like, and, uh, and then and he was trying to question because he knows who I am. I know him. I, he knows when I get out. I'll know him. I'm moving the same circles as him. And he was like, what the fuck, bruv? I said, bruv, I've got to survive this, man. I've got to, and then the priest come in and started on me. The priest literally started on me. What did the priest come in and goes, I think you're fucking clever. I went, you what? And because I refused food again, I, I said, I'm not eating anything that's halal. So yeah, I want chicken that's on the menu, but I want non-halal chicken. I'm just being a little prick, I was, yeah. But I said, I want non-halal chicken. So get me some non-halal chicken. And then they can't get you non-halal chicken. I said, well, how come I don't get a choice? And I'm, I'm just, by this point, I think, yeah, I'm going to cause mayhem in here now, yeah. I'm going to cause mayhem. And I'm arguing and all the travellers are on my side. 
And they're going, yeah, what are you? And I say, Catholic, because I know what's coming. Yeah, yeah, fucking paedophile. So I can hear the travellers going, well, what? And then, so the whole place is erupting, man. I'm thinking, what are they going to do? Yeah, because the whole, I mean, the whole jail is erupting now. It's all going. And then my mate comes back from, and my mate's shouting from the cells upstairs, saying, I've got his back, and all hell's going off. The priest comes in and says, you think you're clever? Yeah, I know what you've done. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you fucking, you, you've done this to get to get, get to get down here. I said, yeah, of course I fucking have. What do you mean? But he literally, the attitude he had with me, I said, how many people are you actually listen to you? Because everyone in here is converting, bruv. Oh, I just got really wound up. It was a local priest. And then, uh, and then I thought, what are they going to do? Well, how are they going to deal with this? And at about six o'clock in the morning, next morning, they come in, security. I've got ACAD to Woodhill.